Hey everybody, Dave Igo here. Um, I wanted to do a quick video, uh, a couple more tips and tricks for Tube Laser in SolidWorks 2010. Um, I wanted to do a quick video. Uh, this is a bumper. You can find a, a picture of the actual bumper on my portfolio page. It's an ATV bumper. But I wanted to show you when you're modeling for Tube Laser, okay, because we can, we got a Tube Laser now. We can do fancy stuff, right? We can do all kind of crazy stuff. Well, Here's something uh, that uh, you run across when you do that. This particular tube is the tube we're going to be talking about. And so I've got it open here. Now, obviously with the tube laser, um, what are the advantages? Well, we can put holes in and, you know, and, and we can put copes in. So we can put all of the copes in this tube uh, in the ends here, all, <laughs> all two of them, uh, the copes in the ends as well as drain features in the tube laser before we bend it now. That creates um, some interesting challenges. That turns this part, and and really this entire bumper. Um, another two blazer, a couple of two blazer features is the mounting points here, where we're putting a uh, a tube through a tube, and that winds up being really handy. But this is just an ATV bumper, right? It's not a mechanical heart. Um, it's not an artificial leg. It's not a bionic arm. Uh, it's just an ATV bumper. However, because we've chosen to use the tube blazer and put these copes in before we bend this pipe, we've created a, a fairly complex tube weldment here, okay? Um, it's, it's a simple part. It's just a bumper, and it doesn't need ultra-precision QC um, to be a bumper and to be a good bumper. Um, but it does need that kind of precision now that we've involved our high-tech processes, like the tube laser, okay? Because now not only do we need to hold two rotations during bending, but we need to hold two cope rotations to the bend, okay? So it, it becomes a, a significant issue and something that needs to be played around with. Now, if you're bending this on a manual bender, I'm going to give you a little trick here, and I think I'm going to do a video about it. But if you're doing this on a manual bender, if you've got a roll bar bender and you want to do a bunch of roll bar kits and you're going to have somebody do your tube laser work, um, It'll take a little playing around, but usually on a mechanical or a manual bender, um, a race car bender, let's call it, uh, there's a pinch bolt. You'll have your radius die sits in here and a U-clamp probably or a U-strap that goes over this straight, and then there's a pinch bolt right here, okay? So all you need to do, you know what, I'm going to do a video about it. So check out my other video because uh, that's important. That's going to take uh, our high-tech laser and put it down um, at the grassroots level where everybody can use it. So ch I'm going to do a video about it. I'll probably do that in a couple days. Check it out. Anyway, when you're cutting this in the tube laser, what do you need to do to this tube? Well, first you need to flatten it, okay? And by that I mean you need to develop a flat pattern, just like you would with a piece of sheet metal. Well, SolidWorks doesn't really give you uh, a way to do that. Um, I suspect that they will for uh, SolidWorks 2011 or uh, 2012, but there's a uh, five or six certified, quote unquote, certified gold partners, gold SolidWorks partners, that make a plug-in that will do that, and they're very expensive. Um, I, I I just refuse to believe that that it couldn't be done. So once again, I needed to develop one of my Renegade cheats, right? Um, and it works just fine. So I'm going to share it with you guys. And uh, it goes something like this. So this is our tube, okay? Uh, let me just uh, show some sketches here. Um, so, you know, this is our line, and it's uh, derived from a, a structural member um, and brought into a new part. But there's a couple of numbers we need to, new, um, need to know. Right there. This one, I want to measure that arc length, okay? So 1.825. We're going to call it 1.825, okay? We're going to need to know that. Now we're going to go Insert, Features, Delete Body, and get rid of it, okay? Now, uh, normally I would, I would write these down, um, but I'm just going to show you the one end here, uh, just so you see how we do it. And uh, I've already forgotten that number. Let's look again. 1825, inch 825. So that's that's the number we need to remember. Inch 825. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to just... Uh, create 
great, so I don't forget. So there's our inch 825. Now we go insert, features, move copy. Okay? So we're going to move this body. And if you guys have never played around with this, all you need to, it, it works just like the mate functions. And so we're going to move this body, go down here to mate settings, we're going to mate this face to this face at our, I think it was inch 825. And do that. And go insert features, move copy, Oops. we're going to move this one, go to our mate settings, click that face, and that face. Voila! Now we go from there, and we come back into here, and go sketch, convert, convert the ID and go extrude, merge, up to next. And there's your flat tube. Okay, now you do need to, uh, I don't want to say you do need to, you should check your angle of rotation versus your bend after you do this. Now I will say this, uh, I have never, ever done this, and I've done this with a lot of pipe. I've never had that rotate. It always works. Okay, so it's like SolidWorks was thinking about it, and they just didn't get to it. Um, so uh, check it, but it, but it typically it, it it works. Okay, now something I need to tell you: we took this arc length at inch 825. You're going to need to develop. Um, a scaling factor for that arc based on the degree of bend. And that's going to come from your own numbers. Uh, if, if you're running a quality tube bending program, um, you're going to know exactly what you're losing in, in every bend anyway, and your setup's going to be repeatable. And you're going to take that inch 825 and, and multiply it by 93%. Or, or whatever that number is. I guess if you have any problems, the, it's pretty simple math, guys. If you have any problems with it, shoot me an email. Go over to my website, daveigo.com, and you can send me an email, and I will uh, I'll explain it more. Maybe I'll write an article about it. I don't think it warrants a video, so I'm not going to do one. Uh, if you're just bending roll cages, and you're using a manual bender where you don't have a ram pressure, and you don't have a boost pressure, or any of those things to consider, um, then what I would recommend doing is taking a piece of pipe and actually take like four pieces of pipe because use a different one for each one and simply go 22 and a half, 45, um, 67 and a half, 90 and just measure them all and see what you lost. It's pretty pretty easy to do. Um, but anyway, so that's our quick video on how to flatten a tube in SolidWorks and uh, go to my website and check out all of my tips and tricks. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the third video I put on YouTube. I'm going to ask you guys, if you found this information useful, interesting, or you watched the whole video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a positive, or leave me any comment. If it's a bad comment, leave me a bad comment. I want to hear those too. So thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.